Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Give this a second and see who we have hopping on. Oh, should have worn my glasses. Hi, Sherry. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining. All right, so I'm not going to be too delayed with starting. We will um, chit chat a little bit as we get going, but it's been a long time since I've done a live. I've done a lot of pre-recorded videos, but not a lot of lives. There's just not as much time in the day as I think there is. So thank you everyone who had time to stop by and join me today. I'm going to show you how to make this really fun birthday card. You can make it for anything. I actually have lots of suggestions. This is one of the cards where I actually printed my own sentiments with my printer. One, two, um, this is just regular basic white. So I'm not sure. I'm going to ask this question, and I'm going to ask you to comment to let me know, and I will try to remind people as we go throughout this live because I'm not sure if this is a regional thing or not. But here in Maryland, um, particularly you know, Baltimore, East Coast, beach areas, we have things called crushes. And I'm not sure if anybody else has ever heard of a crush or not. So that's what the theme of this card is. This is a crush. And I'll show you a couple different versions of this that I created. So just to bring you up to speed, a crush usually has some sort of a, sque a squeezed citrus fruit. So not lemons, because that would be a little too tart, but you can do grapefruit, you can do orange, you can do probably like a lime orange. But crushes are a big thing on the east coast i don't know if that's a maryland thing so have you ever heard of a crush it's a drink <laughs> and i'm going to show you how we made this it's actually considering that it looks pretty complicated we have a little bit of work to do our um, embossing and die cutting of our fruit however so donna has okay donna tell me where you're from so that's a better question if you've heard of a crush and then tell me what state you live in or what area of the state you live in just because I would like to go back and check these out before we end our video today um but these are like a uh I don't know like a summery kind of a drink and I think they're really really fun Michigan okay great so I'm glad to know that they're not just a regional to Maryland area drink but they seem to be something somewhat newer. Um, I've been drinking them for a few years. I don't remember this when I was growing up ever, so I'm assuming they're newer. But I made this card as a grapefruit crush. And I'm going to show you. I actually have a couple versions because it took me quite some time to get this down where I felt like it was good enough that it was an actual card. So I actually started off, and let me take this out so it doesn't give you a glare. I started off doing this and creating my own curve of a glass, but I really didn't like the way it looked on white. So this was just a white, um, basic white card stock. And then you can see there's embossing on it. Now this one also is embossed. So you can see that shine there. But this I actually did on vellum. So I'm going to show you how I did this card. This is what it looks like if you're just doing it on white. You can see I just used a scrap. So you could do it on white, but I feel like it gives you more realistic of an actual glass. So, oh, thank you for joining it gives you a little bit more of an actual glass feel with this versus you can't really see the straw inside. So, and you can't also see the other side of the fruit. So I ended up going with a piece of vellum to create my glass. I also had originally, and I'm going to show you if you want to do something a little bit smaller, the only problem is, Oh, they seem to have glued themselves together a little bit. The only problem is you wouldn't be able to do the fruit with this because it would be like super sized in the background. I actually tried to do a couple different versions. Oh, I must have let these sit when they were not fully dry. Let me just give you a halfway peel apart so you can see what I was looking at. So I used our beer. Um, I don't know if it's called beer. Probably drinks of some sort. I can't think off the top of my head. But I did use the glasses. But these weren't really a typical crush style glass. Because it's usually in just like a, a straight up pint glass. This has more of like a specific beer beverage, which I don't know, maybe like a Pilsner glass or something. I even trimmed this one down. 
And I actually just added color with these, and I'll tell you what I did with these. I added color with these with my um, watercolor pen. Yes, my watercolor pen just dipped into the ink. And, and then what I did is I ended up covering them with liquid glue. And then I got to the point where I really didn't like the shape of the glass, so I just kind of outlined my own. And this was great, but again, it just doesn't really go with the size of it. But maybe if you don't want to make your own glass like this one, I'll show you what you're going to do if you want to make a larger glass. So just to catch you up one more time in case you missed it in the beginning, I also did print out all of my own sentiments. I did a lot of them. We actually used this for our stamp club a couple weeks ago. So I was doing a play on words with the crush and everything. Um, I printed a whole sheet of these and let people just pick out what they wanted because I figured you could do it for birthdays, for celebrate, you know, like so many different things. Changing up your font. There's lots of different stuff that you can do there. So the basic card is fairly simple. And I'm going to show you how we created it. Um, before I get started, I just want to tell you, celebration does end February 28th. So we still have lots of things left in here. There are a few things sold out. The Dainty Flowers DSP is sold out. Um, I believe the Owls, if they're not sold out, they're on low inventory. I did not check that one specifically. But another thing that I'm going to show you is really great is this Dandy Designs paper. So this paper... Is, which is I was showing you in the beginning, is a humongous stack of paper. So this is free if you have a $100 purchase, but there is so much paper here. I mean, you could use this. I'm really hoping that I get to put another order in and get one more stack of it because it's really versatile. It has lots of plaids, um, lines, flowers. You could use both sides. It's really, really pretty. So if you take a look online, these, if you want to see them closer, these are all the patterns. So lots of stuff, lots of color choices. Balmy Blue, Calypso, Freesia, Granny Apple Green, Mango Melody, and Petal Pink. Plus there's, you know, you can always pair it with white, black, different shades of gray. So lots of stuff in there. If you've gotten everything you want here, they also did add a few items that are in the regular catalog. The Enjoy the Journey DSP, which is amazing. This has some great, great prints in it. Um, Into the Clouds embossing folder is really nice, but this is going to be ending in just three days. And then right now we still have the mini catalog available. This will be available until I believe it is April 30th. So if there's, there are a few things in here that are also sold out. I know the shamrock punch is gone, but there's lots of great stuff that you can still work around. I'm also featuring this hand-drawn dots we're going to be using. That's the background of our card here. So without any further delay, let me show you how to get started. So we're going to make the, I'll say more complicated parts first. And more complicated really isn't even that complicated because the great part is you have this in case you haven't seen it. This is actually an embossing folder that you can also simultaneously die cut, which makes it super, super easy. So you just kind of fit that die in there until it's nested. You can feel it kind of clicks in place. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna actually just run some, I had it a minute, there it is, some white paper. And I really used this little half slice and the full slice. You could use the other ones. You're definitely not gonna need this because grapefruit are not this shape, first of all. But I'm just gonna place this right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it on here, close this, and then this is going to go through my big shot. And if I'm not mistaken, you use, and so this would be different if you're using a cut and emboss machine, but you're going to use your regular base plate and one acrylic plate because it is a thicker folder. This is where the uh, folded end is, and you always want to feed this in first so it kind of presses the air out of the machine. Oops, nope, look at that, I was wrong. Hold on one second. Because I know if I use the blue one, it's two, or it's one. Maybe I was, yeah. So what you're gonna actually do, <laughs> backtrack one second, is you're going to emboss this with, if you still have your Big Shot, with the blue plate. So what it does is it's going to emboss and cut all at the same time. It does make a little cracking. That's completely normal. Let me move this out of the way. And I am gonna need my, um, Big shot for one more thing, but you can see it gives a lot of detail on there. It really deeply embosses these pieces. So we're going to use those two. We'll save 
this one for another time. We could even save the, um, the lemon or lime, whatever it is you want to do. And then this also, if you wanted to, you could just regularly emboss the whole thing if you wanted a background. So it's very versatile. And it also comes with several other dies that go along with it. This also coordinates if you wanted to use it for the stamp set with this die. And then you also have the center pieces that go in there. So this is a really, this is one where I was a little bit nervous about buying it because I kind of thought, how much am I going to actually use it? But I think we've used it quite a lot in stamp club. So one other piece that we need to do, and I'm just going to grab my vellum. So let's see what we have here. A little scrap. And I'm going to cut just like a scrap piece. Let's go with like three and a half. And then we're going to use the deckled rectangles. I believe it is one, two, three, four. This one, the fourth smallest. And we're going to just die cut this. And you're just kind of going to the full edge because you just want a piece that's similar. So it doesn't really need to be if you want to make it flat, but I kind of felt like it gave a little bit more depth to the glass portion. Believe me, I put so much thought into this. You have no idea. It's absolutely ridiculous, actually. I kind of, to the point where I was obsessing over it and I had to stop. So I'm going to run this through my big shot. So just to catch you up, in case you haven't already, we're making a grapefruit crush card. So if you have ever heard of a crush of any kind, orange, grapefruit, mixed, I don't know, they probably have blood orange and all different varieties at this point. Um, let me know where you've heard of it from, which state that you're watching from, because I was trying to figure out how far this goes coast-wise. Okay, so what we're going to do is... We're gonna add a little bit of color to these. So I wanna tell you one other thing. Right now, it is snowing here. We had 78 degree weather two days ago, and now it's snowing. <laughs> it's just insane to me. All right, and my son is playing the recorder, so I apologize. If you hear that in the background, apparently we're back to recorders again now. So I know this is a little difficult to see, but once I start adding ink to it, you'll know. So I have two sponge daubers. One for Flirty Flamingo, and then one for Pale Papaya. So for the Pale Papaya, what I'm actually going to do, and I'm going to take my spoon. I re-inked these recently, and I'm just going to press this just so it's a little bit more into the... pad. All right, and then I'm just going to take, and I kind of just dragged it a little bit across. I was not very specific... I didn't really avoid anything except maybe about a quarter inch here at the top. Okay, so I'm going to take my dauber and I'm just going to spread this around just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to ink with the ink on one side and then we're going to actually emboss it on a different side. So I'm going from lighter to darker, just kind of lightly spreading those. And the reason I did direct ink with the pale papaya is because it's a really light color. Then we're gonna go in with our flirty flamingo and just pick up a little bit with our sponge dauber and just kind of tap just to add and then kind of blend the two colors together. So grapefruit crush could be a little bit more pinkish, a little bit more orangish, but that's kind of where we went with it. I'm not a fan of orange crushes because they tend to be really sweet. So a crush usually has um, vodka, triple sec, and um, fruit juice. Pretty delicious, especially in the summer. All right, so this we're going to now flip over so you can see the color a little bit more. And I think I might add just a little bit more of the pale papaya. And one thing, when you emboss this, it kind of almost brings out the color. So even if it's a little bit light, it's still okay. It doesn't need to be super dark. But, you know, we've had some crazy weather 
this week, and I have heard that there has been some devastating weather in many, and many, many, many other parts of the United States, which is just so horrible. And I'm closing these. I actually still need them. I had uh, I injured my shoulder, so I've been going to physical therapy, and the physical therapist was telling me how much cold weather, and I believe snow in Southern California, which is crazy. So my heart goes out to all of you. If you're watching from that area, I guess it's not so sunny in California in certain parts these days. So what we're going to do is same thing with our sponge dauber. We're going to start with the pale papaya and just kind of lightly, we're just going to add a little bit of color. It probably was a little bit more than I wanted to, but we're going to spread it out so it'll be okay. And we're going to do the same on our little wedge. So we want to have some color, but we don't want it to be really super dark in any one area. So I'm not going to re-ink again. I'm going to go out just a little bit to the edge. Not a whole lot. Then I'm going to move on to my flirty flamingo. I want to make sure this isn't too. So we're kind of going on the outer rim to give that grapefruit rind ish look and then bring a little bit more inside i'm going to add a little bit more i think to that same on this one um, if you want some more tips with this <laughs> here i am sending you to somebody else's page if you have never watched patty stamps patty bennett she's actually in california she did an amazing video which is actually where i got the color inspiration for the grapefruit color for this. She did a really, really in-depth card with lots of different citrus fruit, really, really cool. So check her out, she has a great video. I'm just going back in with a little more pale papaya. Okay, and I think that's pretty good. I don't wanna overdo it. And then one other thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna keep out the pale papaya because we're gonna add that to the background. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. I'm gonna move these over to dry. We still have to emboss this, but we're nearly there. So we're going to, where is it? Oh my goodness. Did I put it in the wrong spot? Oh. <laughs> Forgot I was working on another card. I could not find my pale papaya cardstock. So we have a base for that. And then we're going to just need another little layering piece, which I'm going to trim down. So you could do this in any orientation you like, but we're going to trim this to four by five and a quarter for our layer. And then I have some of that really great DSP. And we just want a piece that goes across the bottom. It does not need to be very big. So we'll say maybe like, it's probably about an inch and a quarter. And I might, might be able to trim it down just a little bit but an inch and a quarter by four, that's pretty good. So we're gonna layer that on. We're gonna put our dainty designs. I just wanna score this cardstock layer because I did not. So five and a half, and then we're gonna score this at four and a quarter, just like so. Okay, and I tend to do these, some may say the lazy way, but I say the easy way. So I usually leave my larger um, background stamps in the case, and then I just ink. So I'm going to just directly ink this, just like so. And you said no alcohol. So what you're thinking of is just a regular like a summer beverage that is not alcoholic. Yeah, so, you know, on the East Coast, I guess we have to take everything to the next level. So I'm just kind of pressing with my fingers, and then I'm going to just flip it. So it looks pretty good. It's really all I wanted was just a uniform dot. I will go back and clean this later. I'm just going to pull this out so it doesn't get inky. Okay, so we have our layer. This is going to go onto our base card. And I think we're actually finished with this because I don't want to actually... It's not a very dark color, but, you know, if it gets on the place it's not supposed to, it will ruin your card regardless. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add this on. We're going to add on 
this piece. We're going to emboss. So this is the inked side. We're going to emboss this. We're going to just kind of giving you a little bit of a layout. We'll sit this down here. The other thing we're going to do with our grapefruit slice is I'm just kind of slicing in proximate center just so I can figure a place to put it. The only other thing we need is our straw. So with that, all I did was I have plenty of scrap and I just took a little scrappy piece. It could be skinny, it could be fat. I made it a little bit more exciting by adding color to it. So we'll use the skinny piece. So just all the scraps that I have. And I took my parakeet party and I just used the brush tip and I kind of just made myself a straw. Doesn't have to be fancy. You're probably gonna end up trimming it down. I find that I make them a lot longer than I need them to be. That may be a little bit longer. And you could do this with any color. I just went with Parakeet Party because that was the color of the green that we used for the bottom portion. Pretty close, probably not the same, but kind of like that bright green. So there is that portion. All right, so the final part of what we have to do is heat embossing. So let me just turn on my embossing gun tool, whatever it is we call it. So I'm gonna turn this on to heat it up just basically so the melting will occur really fast because we're gonna try not to warp our vellum, but it really won't make too much of a difference. So I'm gonna heat this up and put that off to the side for a second. In the meantime, <clears throat> I'm just gonna grab my wink of Stella. I just gave a little bit. Oh, wow, that's a part that's never come off before. The inside of the cap. I use these so much, it wouldn't be surprising to me because we actually use these a lot to paint with after they've run out of kind of sparkle. They're really great for watercoloring or just painting if you want a little bit of sparkle to them. So if your wink of Stella brushes go dead, don't throw them away. They can be saved. <coughs> One other thing. <coughs> All right, so clear embossing powder. I have my very used coffee filter, Versamark ink and my piece. So again, this side is still wet, so you want to emboss onto the dry side. So I'm gonna just take this, and it wasn't very particular, I just kinda went all over. It doesn't have to be completely smooth, you just want a little bit of shine. <coughs> Apologize for my cough. All right, grab this, and sprinkle. <clears throat> dog hair and get rid of that <clears throat> and that's it so just give it a little tap and then I'm going to put this back give me one second All right. <clears throat> so I have my heat tool. It's really hot. The only thing you have to do, it's easier, I should say, is if you have a little piercing tool just to hold it still while you heat it so it doesn't blow all over the place. And, <clears throat> excuse me, when you heat your embossing powder, it turns from like a gritty, kind of sandish looking thing to shiny and smooth. That looks pretty good. Okay. And you can't, oh, I missed a spot. <laughs> nope. Let me come back.
it's hard to tell when you're not, I should say when I'm looking like over the camera. There you go, that's, I missed a, just a tiny little spot over here. One more. There you go. Okay, now, <clears throat> if you want, if this really isn't quite dark enough for you, give it a moment just to let this cool and set, otherwise it'll get stuck to your paper. We can always add just a teeny bit more I don't really feel like it needs any, and I'm not going to. You could if you wanted to, but I think it feels good enough. So while this is cooling, we're just gonna put some of this together. So I'm just gonna put some glue. I mean, even this side is adorable. I love the packs of um, the plaids, but the packs of cardstock that they've come out with lately have been really, really nice. And we actually have another one that's really cool. So if you happen to watch this, this is live today, is uh, February Saturday, February 25th, 2023. And this might be just a little bit off. I might, yeah, just do a little trim. So just while that's setting, if you do miss this or say you're watching after the fact, now it's not the exact same, but we do also have the Country country Gingham Designer Series paper, which kind of almost replaces the one that we had in the holiday catalog. But this has a lot of really great colors too. The only thing is it's only four colors, but still really pretty. Lots of great patterns in there. So we have that. Let me just trim this little nip off and we are not supposed to get any obviously accumulating snow considering it's was 70 some degrees the other day um i'm going to just glue this down directly but if you want you could also put it up on dimensionals we are going to put one of the wedges of grapefruit up on a dimensional all right so there's that. So now we're going to look. This is all finished. The other side, it does take a little bit to dry. You can see there's just a couple little barely wet spots there. That is unfortunately normal with vellum. Vellum does take a lot of time because it's not actually seeping into the paper like it would with this. It kind of just sits on the surface, so it does need to air dry a little bit. And I'm going to put just a little bit of glue right here. I'm going to put that kind of on the edge, and I'm going to just hold that for a second. We don't really need to have glue on this front piece here because we'll glue the back. And the only other thing I need to figure out is my straw, which I think what I'm going to do is we're going to go up here. So I'm going to trim this off just a smidge. And where's my snips? Straight like that because straws aren't angled. So remember, don't try to angle your straw. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here and just going to kind of press it. I'm just moving it around just a little bit just so that, and you can't see the glue on the other side, which is kind of nice about this embossed portion. You can't see that glue on there at all. But when you do glue vellum, here's the thing. You will see the glue. So you kind of have two choices. You can either really heavily adhere this and this part and leave and then under here obviously or what you can do is and this is what i usually do i'll take my glue i'm definitely going to put a good amount on here because it's hidden same on this part here but what i usually do with the portion is i kind of take this give a little bit of a squiggle and then i'll try to keep a finger that i'm not going to use so i'm going to just take my finger and kind of spread it you do want to be a little bit careful because you are going to reactivate the ink, but it's not significant enough that it's going to ruin your card. And then once you actually press it, I don't want this to be too high because my I got a little overzealous with the top of my straw up here. You're just going to give that a press. So this is my dirty finger. I'm going to try not to touch anything with that. And I might nip just a little bit off up here, just a tad. Okay, remember, go straight. There you go. Just so it's not super hanging off. All right, so there's that. <clears throat> and then I, <clears throat> I am going to pop this up with dimensionals just because something has to have some dimension on this card. I'm using a little. It is a lot of, like, fun elements, but it doesn't have a lot of lift. All right, put this kind of here and angled. And then the only other thing we have to figure out is... What sentiment do we want to put on here? And I have a couple suggestions if maybe you're not into printing your own sentiment. There we go. I feel like 
I'm gonna hold this just for a sec to make sure this adheres. I wanna hit it just with a little bit more of a, where's my pen? I know I have a fresh, here it is. Mm. Here's the fresh one. I haven't even taken the cap off of it yet. I'm gonna shake it just for a minute while I'm holding this. But I just wanted to have just a little bit more sparkle. Okay, so if you get, this is a brand new Wink of Stella pen. So when you get it, you might be like, well, this doesn't really work very well. What you have to do is you unscrew it. You take this little black piece, throw it in the trash. Because what you're going to do is this is actually going to puncture this now. So you're going to just press and screw. You do want to make sure you shake this every single time you use it. So you don't get like a big glob of sparkle. Okay. And then... You're gonna squeeze, so it has a little spot here where it says push, and you'll see the ink is going to start flowing. You can see it right here. Hopefully you can see that. But you don't need to squeeze a lot because it does get pretty drippy. So just kind of give it a second. Just kind of fool around with your brush a little bit. I don't wanna to get too much. Oh, so that's a lot. You definitely don't want that much, but what you wanna do is just kind of let it blend. A lot of times when I do this, and I should have told you this ahead of time or done it would have been even better, I'll use my um, silicone mat. That way I don't get a big goop. But you don't want a whole lot. So I'm just going to, I kind of wiped off my brush excess a little bit. So same here. There you go, just like that. So just enough, not oh, not a ton. So I'm gonna move this over. Let me just wipe this off, and then and the reason why you don't want to have these puddles is because you're kind of wasting your wink of Stella. So save it for something you can actually use it for. Um, I do tend to store these when they're brand new, upright. That way I can give it a good shake. But if I know that they are dead, which basically means they don't really have a lot of refill, I'll store them down this way. So anything that comes in, but a lot of times I'll use these with my ink pads or my refills to color with. They're really, really nice coloring brushes. So just keep that in mind. And then finally, the last part we have, which will be our sentiment. So we have lots of different ones. Let's crush some drinks. Um, let's celebrate you crushed it. I think I'm going to do happy summer, let's crush it. Lots of different things. I just kind of picked out some things. I'm sure you could probably even look up like crush sayings. I don't know if that's a, a thing or not, but I'm going to pretend it is. So I'm going to just take this and just trim it right to the end. And you could even break this sentiment apart into two different pieces if you wanted to. Okay, let me see. I'm going to trim this just a little bit closer at the top. That looks good. All right. And then I just have still some of these left that I can use. And you can do whichever you want. So, again, we don't have a lot of lift on this. So I'm actually going to put this on with, I have like one little piece left of my foam adhesive strips. Let's see if this is going to be too long. Nope, that looks just perfect. So, maybe you have some summer friend birthdays or maybe you have people that you go on vacation with every year which would be really fun to send them this card maybe like before your vacation or before summer break or you know depending on whatever your lifestyle is at the moment on what you want to do I think it would be a really really fun card to share with people great birthday card. And the other thing is too, you don't necessarily have to make this as a grapefruit crush. You could do orange. Um, there are definitely lime crushes. So if you did go with lime, you could even use instead, you could also use this bigger piece if you wanted to, but you could do your little lime maybe or in the foreground as well. You could put something on the inside if you wanted to. Um, lots of great ideas for this. I think it's really fun. And the other thing, here's one other thing I should have told you. Let me just grab, because this isn't quite as dark as this one is. So you'll get different things depending. One other thing you can do, and you can see how my rim here is a little bit darker. If I'm gonna grab, I think I used mango for that. 
my mango. And as a matter of fact, let me put the cap on this and I'll show you with one of my Wink Costello brushes. I might have to use just a little bit of water, but I'm gonna give this a squeeze. My Wink Costello pad is definitely, um, it's, I don't know if it's just this pad particularly, but it's definitely got some strange inking stuff on the top here. So don't pay attention to that. But I put a drop of water and then I'm just gonna get my brush out and you don't want it too light. So the other thing you can do is just dip a little bit. Now you definitely would want to do this before. So this is a tip. I'm sure no one is putting this card together with me as we speak. But maybe if you're going to come back and watch the replay. The other thing you could do is you can even kind of trace right along that edge there. To just make it a little bit darker. And again, if you're going, depending on the fruit you're going for. If you're going for a grapefruit. You don't want it to be too orangey. You do want it to be a little bit more pink. And then we'll just kind of fade the edge out just a little bit. You could even do the same. Close that one up with your flirty flamingo. We'll bring this one down here a little bit more. So this one already has plenty of ink at the bottom. Just wipe this off. The only thing you have to be careful is if you're using this and it doesn't have any um, Wink of Stella in it to flush, what you might want to do, and I'll show you because I have one here I can dump, is grab yourself like a little bowl. I always have these little bowls around. And where is my water brush? Just take, put a little bit of water in there. It doesn't need to be a lot. And just swish, swish it around just to kind of clear off the color. So you can see it's pretty, it's got a little bit of a tinge, but it's fairly neutral. And then I'm gonna go in here and grab a little bit of this Flirty Flamingo. And as long as it's in the lid, I'm okay with it because I can always wipe that out. You just don't want that to happen with the pad. Move this up and I'll just bring a little bit here. Just like so. Just a little bit to the edges of this. Okay, and then same thing. Now I'm gonna do use the lighter one. Just blend it back just a little bit. That was with the pale papaya. So pretty, very pretty card. Simple-ish. I am going to, because this is a little bit mixed with the mango, I'm gonna just wipe this one section out. I won't wipe out the whole thing because I could still use the rest of it. But so flirty flamingo. And papail, bleh, and papail. <laughs> pale papaya were the main components for this card, but you can kind of do whatever it is you want to do, depending on how rich you want your fruit to look. Um, and I mean like vivid rich, not a different, I don't really even know what kind of other rich I was getting at, but depending on what you want your card to look like, that's also what you want to type to typically adjust on there. So I'm going to see if really quickly I can scroll back and just make sure I didn't miss any comments or questions. Just give me one second here. Thank you all again so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. Now I can't see any of the comments now. That's so weird. When you, um, oops. Okay. Nope, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be able to do that. When you, um, Leave a comment live. A lot of times, unfortunately, it does erase it after the fact. So if you want to, you're welcome to come back and join again. Watch this again on the replay and see if there's anything that you missed or anything else that you would suggest to add to this. Or maybe even if you have a tip or something about this type of a card or suggestions for other cards to make. I do have my card class for March that I'm finishing up. And I have some really, really cute ideas. I have two fun folds and then I have another a very simple card because sometimes I tend to go over and beyond just a little bit too much so I have some card ideas but if there's something that you would like to see made please feel free to sh shoot me an email send me a message you can also leave a comment here on YouTube I don't get a ton of comments so I do read virtually every one of them just because I don't get a lot so there's not a lot to check but I hope you guys found this a fun video. It was definitely much fun to make once I got figured out what it was, was that I was doing with this particular card. But also, my other question is, do you know someone that you'll be able to give this card to? Is this a good card for you? Or again, is it just too summer or regional specific? I'm hoping this is going to be a huge hit because 
this is such a fun card to make. It was definitely, especially with all of the, the li little elements to it. And I think it does really look like a glass when you have that embossing on there. Clear embossing powder. Greatest part about it is you can emboss any color. So if you did want to do like something lime, for example, you could do a combination between Parakeet Party, Granny Apple Green, and maybe like a teeny bit, if you're doing the lime, of Garden Green. And you could even do like, a, I mean, you could do like a lime aid. It doesn't necessarily have to be even a crush. You could do like a lime aid, a lemonade, an orange aid, um, a citrus aid, and have like different kinds of punches with it. This would be a great color combination for doing a lime card. We do have a lot of oranges right now. I really wish that this one, Grapefruit Grove, was coming back because this would have been perfect color for it. But since not everybody has this, I hate to say to use it. But if you do have it, Pale Papaya, Grapefruit Grove, and maybe just not really Mango because Mango doesn't is a little bit too orangey-orangey. But with using the Flirty Flamingo gives you kind of like that pink grapefruit color. That'd be great. So if you have these, maybe you could give that a try and see how it ends up working out. But we do still have pale papaya for a little bit longer. One more thing I want to say before we wrap up here is the in colors. I'm pulling them out right now so you can see. These are going to be retiring soon. Now I'm going to tell you two things. If you have these pads and you don't have the ink refill, which are not terrifically expensive. I think these are like $3.50. Definitely buy it because you can at least refill, refill your pad even if they decide to discontinue these colors. Now, what happens sometimes when they have an in color, they'll make it into a regular color. So it will be not a two-year color. It will go into our regular color family, which are like the brights, the darks, the neutrals, and the regals. However, we have not had a color refresh in some time. So we may end up losing some of our colors and adding some other ones. I really like this color. I know some people think it's a little bit too light, but I think it's such a nice color in addition to some of the things we have. So I'm personally hoping this one, um, I know a lot of people like the evergreen, which I think is really nice. The soft succulent is a really great green. Uh, Freesia, I haven't probably used quite as much and I really do like the polished pink, but these colors, no matter what, the in colors will be retiring when the big catalog retires, which I'm gonna grab it really quickly. I think it is, I feel like this one also ends, yeah, April 30th. This is the first time the mini catalog and this catalog will end April 30th. So if there's anything that you want that has, now these colors will have a whole nother year, the new in colors, which are uh, Sweet, Sorbet, Sweet Sorbet, Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, Tahitian Tide, and there's one more, uh, Parakeet Party. Those we have another entire year. And here was that other stamp set. I was telling you about brewed for you. I know it didn't say beer. They would never put beer in here. But those colors will be retiring. So if there's anything you like, DSP, ribbon, these are going to be gone. So make sure you at least get your ink refill. The cheap thing to add to any order. Um, that way, if you need to, you can always refill your ink pad. You'll have it for a while. Everything else to me is kind of like a bonus. Do I like the papers? Yes. But sometimes I really like the colors enough, which again, pale papaya is definitely one of my favorites. I just bought a new pack of um, pale papaya and Calypso coral because I use those quite a few, quite a lot. So these will be retiring soon. So make sure if you need any of your refills or anything to go along with it. Um, aside from that, we don't really know what is or isn't going to be retiring. It's just me making a guesstimate based on what I've seen in past years. So not any inside information, just a little tidbit. So I hope you all have had a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me today, for spending some time with me, hanging out, commenting. I hope you found some useful information with this. And I probably won't be live again for a little bit, but I will be sending some new videos because I have a couple great ideas that I want to share before things are gone. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. You just click the subscribe button. On this side, make sure you turn on the bell for notifications. And if you have somebody you think would like to watch this video, be sure to share it with them. You can find everything in my online store. <coughs> Excuse me, one last cough. RachTheStamper.StampinUp.net And I will post all this to my blog later, which is RachTheStamper.com. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day.